This is the key to quiz seven. Okay, so plot the function on the given axis. Okay, so then each of these functions is a piecewise function. I'll color the pieces. So I'll say that this first piece is a red piece, and this second piece a green piece. So then the, the place where it switches between red and green is at zero. So right here at x is zero, they'll switch. So the red line, the, the red plot is a line of slope negative two and y-intercept three and it's on the left side of zero. So it's at the left side, and so I'm going to draw an open red spot, an open red dot, because that point is not present. And then it needs to be a line with, which has slope negative two, so then, like this. So the red function looks something like that. Then the green function is a parabola. It's the standard parabola, but shifted down one. And it is going to be on the right side of zero. So then if I plug in zero, I'll get negative one. If I plug in one, I'll get zero. If I plug in two, I get four minus one, which is three. <coughs> If I plug in uh, 3, I get 9 minus 1, which is 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8. And then no more points will fit. So then this function looks like this. The second uh, function to plot, I'll call this the red piece. and this the green piece. And now, the place where the parts are glued together is at x is negative one. So here, is where the switch occurs. So to the left of negative one, the, the function output is always two, and it says less or equal, so then that means that occurs right there also. So then all of these points are on the red function. <coughs> and then the green function is is a function with slope half and y-intercept one. So <coughs> it's here. Now if I plug in negative one, if I plug in negative one so that I know where it is on the on the fence post where it changes, that'd be negative half plus one, so that'd be positive half, and it'd be open. So that's open and then the slope half. <laughs> and to be clear, because the ink bled just a little bit, that's open. Okay, so solve uh, f of x is equal to negative 2. So the idea here is that we're going, we want to know when y is f of x and y is equal to negative 2, we want to know when these intersect. So y is f of x is already plotted for us. So I'll plot y is negative 2 in red. 
So in red, that's this. So that's y is negative 2. So we want to know where is there an intersection between the red and the gray that was already plotted. Well, that point is missed. And that's the only place where that's an intersection. So that is at x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At x is 5. So evaluate <coughs> f of 6. So you, you can do the following. You can say x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the output is negative 1. But to make it more like the way we answered part A, you could also uh, make it look like this. You could say, OK, I want to consider y is f of x. And I want to consider x is 6. The input is 6. And I want to know when these intersect. So if I draw x is 6 in green, <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> so that's x is 6. And you can see the intersection is there at y is negative 1. That's the answer. OK. Now, to answer this one, We want to know when y is f of x, we're going to consider that. And we're also going to consider y is negative 3. And we want to know when this one, when y is f of x, is below this one. When is y is f of x below that one? <coughs> OK, so I'll plot this one in blue. y is negative 3. So that's y is negative 3. So where is the gray below that? Just right there. That's the only spot where it's below. So the answer is from x is negative 3. Ah, sorry. From x is just 3, because that's the right side of the axis. So x is 3 to x is 4, but not including 4 because the gray is not below the blue there they're touching. So is f of x uh, 1 to 1? That is to say, injective, and the answer is no. So for example, x is equal to 0 has three intersections. So <clears throat> there is, uh, sorry, y is equal to 0 has three intersections. So for the output y is 0, there are fully one, two, three inputs that could achieve that output. So the function is not injective. Find the average rate of change. OK. So to recall, the formula for the average rate of change of f on an interval a, b is f of b minus f of a divide by b minus a. So that's the formula. So on this specific exercise, it'll be f evaluated at 2 plus h minus f evaluated at 2, and then over uh, <coughs> all over 2 plus h minus 2. So we'll evaluate all of those. So f of 2 
that is 5 over 8 f of 2 plus h that is 5 over uh, 8 plus h and therefore the average rate of change is f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 divided by 2 plus h minus 2. Now in the denominator the 2's cancel so that the denominator is just h. So this would be 5 over 8 plus h minus 5 over 8 divided by h. And it says simplify as much as possible so within these round parentheses I'll find a common denominator. So I'll do the cross multiplication to obtain in the numerator 40 minus uh, 40 plus 5h and then that will be over 8 plus h times 8 and then all of that over h. So within the numerator Within the numerator, this is 40 minus 40, so that cancels, so that all that remains in the numerator is negative 5h. So this is negative 5h over 8 plus h times 8, and then over h. And then now, dividing by h is the same as multiplying by 1 over h. So that would be negative 5h over 8 plus h times 8, and then multiply by 1 over h. <coughs> and now because h is positive, this h and that h cancel. And that is what remains. So now find the average rate of change uh, for this g. So again, this will be g of 3 minus g of 1 divided by 3 minus 1. So that's what we need to do. So I'll evaluate these pieces separately. So g of 1, well, that would be 3 minus 2 plus 8. So 3 minus 2 plus 8. So that would be 9, and then g of 3, well that would be 9 minus 2 times 9 is 18, and then plus 8. So that would be 9 plus 8 is 17 minus uh, 18 is negative 1. <coughs> g of 3 minus g of 1 divided by 3 minus 1 would be negative 1 minus 9 and then divide by 2 so that would be negative 10 over 2 so negative 5 and that's the answer